Not too bad. Feels a little sticky, a little something about it I just don't like. It's smooth. It is that crisp, but a little heavy and a little sticky. Let's do a few more rounds and see what we think. Just trying to give you some good video footage of this trigger, factory stock, how it feels, how it pulls. Not too bad. Trigger did stick for a minute there, which is weird. Not too bad. It is smooth, but there's something about it that feels sticky and it is heavy. It is a heavy trigger pull. Definitely some really good potential here. We can make this so much better. Before we get started, let's go ahead and check our firearms together, make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this firearm's clear. Let's see what kind of factory trigger pull we're starting with. Seven pounds, 2.1 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Seven pounds, 3.4 ounces. Parts needed for this build, the FN509 trigger spring kit by M-Carbo. This will work for the 509, the 509 midsize, and the 509 tactical. It's got a lighter striker spring, a lighter striker block spring, a lighter sear spring, and a lighter disc connector spring. All lighter springs and different variations to give you a nice, even, reliable, safe trigger pull reduction. Really looking forward to this. Tools needed for this build, 1 16th inch punch, 3 32nd inch punch, 1 8th inch punch, hammer, bench block, micro tip, flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, synthetic grease with PTFE, and as always guys, make sure we're in iPro. All right, so we start the assembly with a simple field strip. Go ahead and lock the slide back. We're gonna go ahead and push down this takedown lever. All right, and then we're gonna release the slide and let it go forward. Now we need to pull the trigger and then we can take the slide right off of that pistol grip frame. All right, so we got our frame and our slide right here. Give you a nice close up look of both of those. It's always nice to kind of study it and analyze it before we tear it all into pieces. This one's gonna be pretty straightforward. It can be a little intimidating, but found an easy way to go about doing this without making it more complex than it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the slide down for now, won't need that. We're gonna tackle the hardest part first. So getting into this frame, particularly the sear housing back here. So for this installation, we won't have to worry about taking out the locking block or the takedown lever or the trigger or the slide stop. Any of these forward components up here where the trigger is, we won't have to worry about that. What we're focusing on is the sear housing back here. All right, so let's go ahead and run through the sear housing real quick. So here is your disconnector. You can see it out here. All right, and this is your disconnector spring right here. We're replacing that. This is your ejector. This is your sear right here. And underneath of the sear, you can see it, two coils of that torsion spring. This is your sear spring right here. There's a little leg of it right there that kind of comes up and around. See that? And this is your carrier here. So these two pieces separate into halves. And that's what makes it, see there's the parting line. That's what makes the most challenging. Otherwise it wouldn't be that bad, but you've got to really finesse it a little bit. And I'll show you some neat little tricks that help. But going forward, if you get to a point where you're like, man, screw this, send it to us. All right, we do the custom work. It's no problem to send us just a bag of pieces. It'd be nice to get all the pieces. But if you send it right to us, it's pretty straightforward. Shop rate, 65 an hour. You know, it just depends how long it takes us. Wouldn't take us more than an hour or two max. Unless there was some sort of major ordeal where pieces are missing or whatever, or something's broken. But as far as just putting it back together, please help. Just call 888-347-1276, man.
<laughs> but otherwise, I hope this video is going to help guide you through. So we're going to jump into the disassembly. Should be pretty straightforward and easy. One important thing I want to point out with these FN509s is when you're tapping out the pins, any of these pins on here, you have to tap them out from the right side to the left side. So just tapping from right to left, and then when we put them back in, you put them in from left to right. All right, so we'll just get it set up here in the bench block. We're gonna tap out this rear sear housing pin right here. It's the only one we need to tap out. So 3 seconds inch punch. Just gonna tap this little baby right out. Mostly there. Just a simple roll pin there. All right, that's what holds the sear housing in place. And there it is. It's already starting to kind of ride up and out for us. So this is where the fun begins right here. And it's not too bad. We'll go through it real slow, detail by detail. Might make it a little longer than I want it to be, but I think it'll be worth it and a good little resource for us. So right here, you can see this is your retaining clip right here. This is what keeps the disconnector in place. You'll see there's a disconnector right there. So that retaining clip is what keeps it right in place. That clip's gonna fall out, it's not a big deal. You'll see the orientation here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Little short leg is on this side where you can see the little short recess cut into it. And the longer leg is obviously on this side to compress that disconnector. All right, so we'll pull up on it and you'll notice as we're pulling up, you'll see a little bit more of the linkage there. And you'll notice that connects to the trigger bar here. So you've got your slide stop here, right? These are the two levers to your slide stop. This is the trigger bar, all right? So it's two levers that connect directly to the trigger down in there. So you'll see how they connect on those lower posts. So there's two posts, there's one up high and one down low, and that's where it's connecting on the lowest post on the sear housing here. You can see it over there. So with this lower pin, I found you can try to pry the trigger bar part, but I wouldn't recommend that. And you can try to shimmy it out, it just gets a little distracting. So what we need to do is take our 3 seconds inch punch and just push it straight through from one side to the other. And it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you how it goes together. But you'll notice in here, there's a spring right in the center of that pin. And I got a little grease in there and that's one of the tricks that helps when you're putting it back together, keep that little spring in place. But we'll go over it, just a simple little extension spring, no big deal. But the easiest method here to get that lower pin out that connects the sear housing to the trigger bar is just to push through three 30 seconds inch punch and that pin's gonna just drop right out, easy as can be. And that's pretty straightforward, all right? So we've got most of the assembly in our hands here. You can see I've got my little extension spring there and a tiny pin. I'll show you how those locate here in a second. Let me just set those down and then the clip. All right, so you can see we got the sear housing out of there. So we can set the frame aside. Don't need to worry about that. We got our lower pin already out. We got our little extension spring right there. We got the little pin that connects to the extension spring. It's really thin and tiny. And then we got our little clip here. And this is what keeps that disconnector in place. So four items so far, and the disassembly continues. The fun just keeps coming. So here you go. So next it'll be removing these two halves here, all right? And that can be a little intimidating, a little crazy. Now, one thing to pay attention to is this disconnector right here. You'll notice how this little feature is up towards the top of this rail right here. That's something we definitely want to replicate, all right? And I'll also show you a nice little trick. And the nice thing about this, it's kind of like a puzzle. Everything's got to line up. So you'll notice this disconnector, it actually locates in a little hole on the opposite side. There's a disconnector spring and the disconnector. So when we put that disconnector through this big hole, there's a small hole on the other side for it to locate into. That's what this little shaft will locate into. So there's really only one way to put it together. So it's pretty straightforward, and you can see that location right in there. So next, you'll notice how the sear moves forward and backward just like this. I want to make sure we replicate that function, and that's definitely critical. All right, and there's really nothing left for us to do. This little pin right here, you'll see it locates right in here, just like that on the back side, and that extension spring be captured on this little pin. That's what puts tension on it. So put that little pin down. Don't worry about that. All right, try to keep our light components together. Now we can go ahead and separate these two halves. All right, this little sear carrier, I'm just gonna hold on to it. It'll kind of compress everything together and I'll pull off that right side, just like that. All right, I'm gonna set the right side down. And you'll notice there's two little tabs there on that right side of the sear housing. It really makes it easy when we're plugging it all back together. 
So here's kind of a side cutaway view, what the inside of the sear housing would look like typically. All right. So something to take notice of and replicate as we put it back together. But really, all in all, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we've got our sear right here, that piece that's moving, and our sear spring down inside, and that's what we're replacing. And remember that functionality, how that sear carrier and that sear would move back and forth? Well, there it is sliding right there in that cutaway on that side of the housing. So that's something we're definitely going to replicate. So now we can just pull it out, sub-assembly held together in place, which is easy. So we'll put that left side of the housing down, and now we can just look at this little sub-assembly here. So we got our sear carrier here, we got our sear right here. You can see it moving up and down. Now notice the torsion spring in there. So that little short leg's pushing up on that top side of the sear there on the inside, and that little long leg with the little hook on it is down here on the floor. So that little short leg's pushing up on the ceiling, and that long leg's pushing down the floor, creating that little compression effect that we need. All right, a couple little views for you. All right, so we're gonna leave it just like this for a second. Let's grab our M Carbo trigger spring kit and we'll go ahead and we'll swap these out. All right, so we got our M Carbo FN509 trigger spring kit here. You'll notice we got a replacement striker spring up here, the longer one, replacement striker block spring down here, replacement disconnector spring, and a replacement sear spring. So all four lighter springs to give us a nice, even, lighter, smoother, cleaner trigger pull. So really excited about this. We'll go ahead and open up, save the bag, put the stock springs in there. All right, so here's the M Carbo Springs here for a nice, cleaner, smoother, even trigger pull reduction. So looking forward to this. All right, so for this segment, we just need the disconnector spring and the sear spring. All right, we can put the striker spring and the striker block spring aside just for one second. All right, so we got the M Carbo Springs here, sear spring, disconnector spring. All right, I'm gonna set that sear spring down for just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the stock disconnector spring. We'll do a quick comparison. I got the M Carbo Spring here on the right and the stock one here on the left. So you can see there's a nice difference there. All right, much lighter, the M Carbo spring over here on the right. So what we're gonna do is put the factory spring in this bag, keep our little factory springs for later. You never know, you might need them in the future, who knows. So we'll take this disconnector spring and disconnector, we'll go ahead and just put them together like this. Just helps to kind of have these little sub assemblies in place so it's logical when you go to put it back together, it's not a big mystery. All right, now here's our sear and our sear carrier. So what we need to do is just replicate this. So we're gonna push this pin out real fast and just drop in that spring replacement. And you'll notice there's a major difference here in the sear spring. This sear spring was way too heavy. It didn't need to be that way. So we get a nice, lighter, smoother trigger pull reduction on the way here. Can't wait for this. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just push out this pin. I'm just kind of compressing this sear a little bit. All right, I'm just trying to hold it in place so we don't have to chase it all over the place. And it'd be nice if you could just pop it out and drop the other one in. I'm just going to keep going. It's likely you could do that. I just want to show how it all goes together. So here's the pin right there. Set that down, all right, you can see the sear, how it locates there, and that sear carrier, and there goes the sear spring. All right, so we can set these two pieces down, real simple and straightforward. This tab's facing the back of the sear carrier there. So set those down. All right, so here's the M Carbo sear spring right here. Nice lighter sear spring. And here is this massive beast of a sear spring over here. I, and yes, it is very different, but it is a lighter, reliable trigger pull reduction, which is just great. This thing was way overdone. Doesn't need to be that way. Drop test safe, good to go. Nice, light, reliable, functional trigger pull reduction. That's what we brought it down to. So much different, much lighter. Looking forward to this. It's like a little baby. That's all we need, man, for that nice and smooth, clean trigger pull. Lawyer proof trigger, need a big beast. Nice, smooth, clean trigger pull. Just need a little baby right here. So we're gonna put this little baby in, put the stock, big old beast aside, back in our bag. All right, and let's put this little sub assembly, if you will, back together. All right, so we got our sear spring, got our sear right here, sear carrier and the pin. And what we'll do is we're gonna drop our sear in position the way it's supposed to be, get it all situated there just like that. All right, got it all situated just like that. We're gonna take our pin, we're gonna slide it right in that carrier. So it goes right in on the side here, all right? Most important thing is getting these components here set up first, and then we'll drop the spring in. So the sear is gonna go in just like this. You can see that, where it's got that leg on the side there. All right, this piece facing us is a big tall portion of the sear carrier right here, all right, on the right side. 
All right, we're gonna drop in this sear spring. Sear spring is gonna go in like that. And it's kind of wanna just fall into place, which is nice. So I'm backing out this pin a little bit, make a little gap so I can get that sear spring in there. All right, make sure you've got enough clearance in there for that sear spring to drop in. So I'm just kind of rotating that pin out. Now just push that sear spring right back in and then push with your finger on that pin and you'll be good to go just like that. All right, kind of a smooth little transition there. Then just look over here, make sure we got the hole lined up, push that pin through. Simple as that. All right, whoa, that feels great. Oh man, that's gonna be beautiful. I love that already. Just smooth as butter right there. All right, excellent. So that's good. So we got our sear set up right here. All right, a little short leg on top, that little leg with the bend in it on the bottom. Just keep a nice compression, nice tension right there. All right, doing its job, love it. So now we can put the rest of this assembly back together. So just do a quick run through. You know, we got our left and right side of the sear carrier there. We got the retaining clip here. We got our sear carrier here, our sear, sear spring and pin. We got our disconnector here, disconnector spring. And then we got another pin here this is the pin that's gonna go in the bottom. And this pin connects with this little extension spring and this other little pin. So they capture through the bottom there. And I'll show you how that goes together. Pretty straightforward. The nice thing is they use that synthetic grease, PTFE. You know, this is gunsmith glue right here. That's a great thing. It's gonna help all these little things stay together. Love it. So this is gonna be quick, fast, straight to the point. We'll get this baby back in the firearm and get some good trigger pull readings. All right, real quick, before we jump into installing that sear housing back here in the frame, I just wanted to cover that trigger sticking issue. It's kind of weird, showed a few of the other guys here at the shop, and we really couldn't come up with a very good reason other than it's this polymer on polymer surface right here as it's dragging. So this underside of the trigger drags on the frame down here. This is your safety right here on the trigger. So as it drags down and forward, it's rubbing right there. So you can see that. And that seems to be where it's hanging up. Because you notice when I was shooting, it stuck and I had to flick it forward. So it would have been this action right here, pushing it forward. So it just dragged and got hung up there. So you can see when you pull the trigger back, unless you pull the safety, you know, it won't go back. And this is the face right here that locks against that frame. So you really gotta pull the trigger just right. And maybe I did something, maybe it was operator error. I'm curious to see if you guys had any issues with it. Now back here under the underside, you know, that's what's going forward for it to reset. So as a bit of a solution for now, I think the big solution would be an aluminum trigger, something better, you know, a redesigned trigger that won't have that issue. I'm gonna take a little synthetic grease with PTFE and I'm gonna just coat the underside and even the top because I just want it to be smooth. I don't want there to be that drag, that grab, that hesitation. So just kind of coating this little area right here and just work it in a little bit. And I can even coat down here a little bit better. You know, clean up some of that excess so it's not sloppy looking. But I'm thinking maybe just getting dirty, just polymer rubbing on polymer. You know, maybe I got one here that's a little rough. I mean, these are molded parts. So it's something that, yeah, that feels better actually already. So just a little tip there, you know, if you're having that issue, but I'm curious to hear if anybody else is experiencing anything like that. Oh, that feels way smoother already. So that could be 90% of it right there. Just kind of that drag, build up carbon on it. It just kind of slows down and you just have a little sticky trigger. Very interesting. And there's no trigger return spring here. That's the other thing. There is a spring down in there, but that's for your safety on the trigger to get it to move down here in this lower portion. So it's interesting design concept. I think a trigger replacement would be the way to go. You know, that would really suck to have that happen when you really need that trigger reset. So let's jump back into the installation here for the sear housing and we'll go ahead and move on with it, but definitely want to cover that piece. All right, so we're gonna start the reassembly. Take this portion, the left-hand side of the sear housing, it's the side with the ejector on it. And then we're gonna take our little sear sub-assembly here, right? We want this portion right here, the sear carrier, 
facing forward towards that ejector up here. All right, and this pin is gonna locate in this channel right here. Drops right in, and this little feature right here is gonna drop into that cavity, so it'll move back and forward. Just like we demonstrated earlier when we took it apart. All right, and definitely wanna make sure that sear moves up and down. Good. Now, what we can do is put the other side on top, and you'll notice there's those little pegs right there. You can see them sticking out. See them sticking out right there and there? So those two little pegs are gonna help, kinda like a puzzle piece, get this thing to locate together. So this side of the pin is gonna go in the channel right here, and we're gonna piece it together, compress it, hold it nice and tight. All right, unfortunately, that's what you're gonna have to do this entire time, is just keep it all together with finger tension. That might be the hardest part about it, really, is that it's not one solid unit. Now we're gonna take our disconnector and the lighter disconnector spring, we're gonna drop it right in. And you can see the orientation of that little hole down there. So we got the big hole and the little hole. There's really only one way to get this in. You gotta get this peg to locate in that little hole on the opposite side. So it's gonna go in in this orientation here, just like that. So there's no way to really mess that up. You know, you'll figure it out eventually. Just this little feature here, you know, is facing the top. That might be the easiest way to kind of remember it. All right, we're looking at the ejector side of this here housing right now. All right, now we need that pin, the larger one in our extension spring. Go ahead and put those in. So we'll slide the pin in, you know, just halfway there, get it started. And you'll notice in the extension spring, you know, one loop is slightly smaller than the other. And you'll know once you go to put this on, you know, you'll try to, you know, that feels pretty snug, that side. This side goes on real easy. So that's the fastest way to kind of quickly tell which side is bigger than the other. The one that's gonna go on the pin, the easiest. <laughs> all right, so all about simple. So what I'm gonna do is take that little loop that's bigger, I'm gonna grab that end with a needle nose pliers, and I'm gonna drop this down in, just like this. And then I'm gonna get that pin to go right through that little eyelet on that extension spring. All right. I kind of got it halfway in there. More or less just kind of push the pin up against that spring to get it at least held in place. All right, and there it is. You just use the micro tip to center it up. All right, push that pin all the way through, and we got our extension spring captured right there in that pin, which is exactly what we want. And what I've been doing since I first took it apart, you take a little of synthetic grease, you know, and you just put it on that eyelid of the spring, and that'll kind of hold it in place, keep it from moving and it'll keep that pin from falling out too. So it's really handy, nice little time saver there. So keep compression on everything, hold that disconnector in place. We gotta get on this side and grab the other end of that extension spring. So now we wanna take our little thin pin here, little tiny one. Be careful not to lose this one. It's really small. All right, we're gonna grab that eyelet and just kinda of pry it up. And get it to drop in place just like that. Simple. All right, so it's all captured at this point. Everything's good, all right? Keep good compression on it. And now we're just gonna take the retaining clip. Remember the long end is gonna go over the disconnector. So it just slides right over, captures that disconnector just like that. And a little short end over here in that pocket. All right, now we need to go ahead and grab the frame. We're gonna drop this whole thing in. So our sear assembly is back together. Now we gotta get it back in the frame. But remember, we gotta get it to locate on this trigger bar right here. So this bar here with those hole cutouts on the very back, we gotta get that pin to locate on the trigger bar. Because when that trigger's pulled, we need some action to happen back here in this sear housing. So this bottom pin right here is what needs to locate in the trigger bar. All right, so we pull up on the trigger bar so that we can get access to it. And then just push that pin, on the bottom one, just push it all the way to one side like that so you can at least grab one portion of that trigger bar and it's going to naturally want to slide through the opposite side while you're trying to hold it all together so we're just going to take a look and see how we're doing it started which is great and now what we want to do is basically pry it in there a little bit and now that sounds bad you're not moving it too much just a bit you know you pull that trigger bar all the way up like that and you're just kind of popping it right in and it will Nice and easy. Main thing is, is just trying to keep all this together in your fingers there while you're doing that simultaneously. 
All right, so we got that bottom pin of the sear housing located in the trigger bar. Just be careful that pin's not floating to one side or the other because it will cause interference on the side of that frame there. But we're good. And naturally, it's going to pull it straight down, but it's going to have it in all these weird orientations. What you want to do is just pull back. It's under that spring tension. So you're going to pull back, but you're going to rotate down like this. So naturally, it's going to want to do this. You're going to pull back a little bit and rotate down and it's all going to kind of seat in there simultaneously. And it is a little bit of a finesse. And you can see this metal portion here, the sear housing, just needs to go back a little bit more so it can drop into that pocket on the polymer. So I can literally just push it back just a little bit. Now, if this pin is walking out, you know, that's going to cause problems. But there it is. So I'm just pushing it back and making sure those pins aren't causing the interference, which they're going to try to. And then it's all locked and located in place. Now we can go ahead and drop in that pin. But remember, we're going to insert it from the left side. So this is the left side here. We're going to drop in the pin right here. Let's grab our bench block. All right, it helps to get all the holes lined up. You can even give yourself an assist by taking three 30 seconds inch punch and just kind of putting it in like that to keep the holes all lined up and then feed it through a little bit by hand. All right, we're looking pretty good, but I'm going to take my three 30 seconds inch punch, keep it in there as a guide, and I'm going to push down on that sear housing just to make sure that it's not trying to walk out on me. I still want to get a little bit more in there to be 100% confident that it's captured and everything's going in like it's supposed to. I'm not just banging metal on metal. All right, you can see it feeding through there nicely. So that's what we want. You know, if you're hitting the crap out of it and it's not moving, go ahead, grab your punch, check the alignment, kind of hold it in your hand there and feel your way through it as you're tapping. It shouldn't be a monstrous hit with a hammer each time. All right. Now we'll just center it up. You just want to have it recessed on both sides. So we're good. And we're back together there, at least on the frame, which is awesome. So now we can go ahead and start the second part, replacing those two springs in that slide. But for right now, we are good to go. All right, so now that the sear assembly is back into the frame, we can go ahead and do a quick little function check. We haven't messed with the slide yet, so let's do that. Let's throw the slide on and just do a quick little function check, make sure nothing's wrong in here. At least we can quickly diagnose that it's in here, not the slide. Because if we just wait at the end, we're still not sure where we went wrong. So we'll go ahead and drop that lever, go ahead and put our slide on, and we're just going to check and make sure that it functions 100%. All right, so pull the trigger. Whew, that's already feeling better. All right, good. So we heard that reset, felt that reset, we're good to go. All right, good. So let's go ahead and finish this installation, pull the slide off. Frame's done. So now we can go ahead and finish up on the slide here. So on the slide, you got your recoil spring up here. So go ahead and just compress it. Pops right out. This little end with the wider spring is what's going to be captured in the slide there. All right, and this little silver portion is going to fit right there on that barrel. We put it back in and then just push up underneath on that barrel, pull the barrel right out. All right, we'll set the recoil spring and the guide rod and the barrel aside. Now we just need to get into the working end here on the slide. So we're going to replace that striker spring and the striker block spring. All right, so now we need to remove the back plate here on the slide. So what you do, take your 3 30 seconds inch punch. It helps if you just push down the table, but we're going to take the punch and we're going to grab that little guide rod in there. There's a guide rod in that striker spring. We're going to push the punch in and we're going to push straight down on that guide rod and then we can pull that back plate right off just like that. All right, so there's the back plate. I still got that spring captured. Let it out easily. All right, there we go. So you can see the back plate, set that aside, take out our striker spring. And you can see there's a little striker spring guide right there. Plastic. All right, so we can set these down. All right, so now we want to remove this striker block so we can get that striker block spring out. So we'll just push forward a little bit on that striker, push down the striker block. All right, and you're going to get to that stop right there. It's not going to want to go. All right, so this is when we want to let this striker block out. All right, we're just going to pull that striker block right up and out. There's only one way for it to go. You'll notice there's a channel right here. That's where the spring is captured. So that's the side that's going to go against this wall of the slide here and capture the spring. This other side just mates up with the striker right there. All right, so we'll set the striker block aside. Go ahead and pull out the striker block spring. This is what we're replacing right here. All right, and that's pretty much it at this point. But we can go ahead and pull the striker out just to see it. There's a striker right there. There's where the striker block 
locates. So when we put it back in, just be mindful of that. We want to make sure we can get that striker block to drop in right there at that point on this striker. All right, so we'll set the striker down. And there's also another little spring in there. This spring goes on the front of the striker here, just like that. All right, so real simple and easy. Now we can replace these springs. All right, so these are all the components you should have here in front of you for your slide. All right, so I went ahead and laid it all out in a logical order here, exactly how it's gonna go in. So this is your striker return spring, this little one here. This is your striker, striker spring, striker guide, back plate, your striker block, and the striker block spring. All right, so we'll go ahead and replace the two springs. All right, so we got a striker spring replacement right here. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this red one, which is stock, we'll set it aside. All right, we'll go ahead and drop it back in that bag. So now we got the lighter striker spring in place. Now we can grab these two striker block springs. All right, I got the M-Carbo spring here on my right, stock spring here on my left. You know, these are pretty small, pretty uh, difficult to hold, but you can get an idea there, you know, the spring difference between the two of them. The M-Carbo spring is definitely lighter. All right, so we'll put this M-Carbo spring in, put the factory one in that bag. All right, so it's all laid out here, simple format. I'm gonna drop it back in, kind of how you see it. So we're taking that striker return spring in the striker, just gonna slide it right in, get it all lined up. Now that little portion there on that striker, see it sticking out in that hole? We don't want that. So we wanna make sure this hole for the striker block is completely cleared, all right? The goal is to get the striker in there to locate with that striker block. So it's all cleared now. Uh, we can grab our striker block and the lighter striker block spring. And what we're gonna do is stick in that channel right there. So you can see there's a channel. This is the underside. This is the top. So this is the top piece that we want facing us as we drop it in. And this is the side here that engages with that striker. So we're gonna drop it right in just like this. Real simple and easy. You can see how it'll move freely up and down. And then we wanna push that striker forward. So you put a little pressure on that striker block so that you can freely move that striker, then let go of that striker block, and it's gonna capture the striker forward just like this. So now it's ready for the rest of the components. So we got our lighter striker spring here with the guide. We'll go ahead and insert that inside the striker. It's about as far as you'll be able to go with it. And it helps you just turn it up like this, and we'll push down on it. Grab your back plate, get it ready. You know, it really goes on one way. See this little cutout here, it's for the striker guide. So what we'll do is we'll get it started but we have to obviously make sure this guide will clear and pass that block. So I just got it hanging out right there. Helps if you just grab it like this, push down on the guide. All right, now we're hitting that back plate. So I just move the back plate out of the way. Keep pushing straight down. Get that guide right in the hole. Now move your back plate over top of it and it captures it just like that. Real simple and easy. And that's it. All right, what we can do real quick is just test the operation. So push down on that striker block and that releases the striker. So we push back on the striker, now it's locked. We'll go ahead and we'll push down, see it move forward a little bit. So that's the operation right there. So we wanna make sure we have that functionality still before we go any further. All right, so there we go, we're good. All right, so we got all the internals in the slide there. Now we'll just take our barrel, drop it right in. And we'll take our recoil spring and guide rod. All right, the shiny end is gonna be captured over here in the barrel. The bigger end is gonna go into the slide there and just push forward on it and get it to capture right there in the barrel just like that. Simple and easy. All right, good, so the slide's back together. We are ready for some function testing. So we can go ahead, put the slide back onto the frame and now we can pull back, lock that slide, take down lever, locks in place. Release it. Beautiful. Now let's see what this trigger feels. Oh man. Woo. That's not even fair. That is just too good. Yeah, you're gonna have a unfair advantage here with a nice trigger like this. That feels good. All right, we need to get a trigger pull reading, and then we need to do some testing, some live fire shooting. Yeah. All right, let's see what this trigger pull is. All right, let's see what we get from a modified trigger pull. Four pounds, 4.3 ounces. Let's take one more confirm. 
four pounds, 4.5 ounces. All right, and just because I know some guys are going to want to see a drop test, so this is about from 18 inches here. Man, I hate doing that. All right, good to go. Fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and test live fire this new lighter trigger pull. That feels absolutely amazing. All right, let's run another mag through it. See if we can replicate that initial issue or see if it's all resolved now. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So much easier to control. Just love it, man. This trigger is going to get you the most out of your FN509 right there. All right, let's throw a few more rounds to this modified trigger pull, man. I'm loving it. Absolutely amazing. Yes, this is excellent. You need this, man. Night and day difference, hands down. Much better shooter, much better performer with this new trigger pull, the way it feels. The only other thing I'd recommend is is an aluminum trigger, but that's it. Well, there you have it, guys. An excellent trigger pull reduction for your FN509. Work for the midsize and the tactical version as well. Really love what we were able to do with this. A 40% trigger pull reduction from seven and a quarter down to four and a quarter. Really fantastic. Three pound drop, very noticeable improvement. Love the way this thing was handling. Just want to keep shooting in these videos. I enjoy it now. I'm really stoked. I hope you guys found some value in it. If not, I'll stop doing it. Maybe. <laughs> really love this trigger, man. Feels absolutely phenomenal. Really like how you're railing out and it's much more of a natural progression rather than before where it's like, ah, you got a much more desirable trigger pull. Nice, consistent, smooth, and clean. And it was already nice and smooth to begin with, but it was heavy and unpredictable. Didn't have that issue with the trigger hanging up. So I think it's something possibly look into maybe replacing the plastic trigger, but at minimum, make sure it's good and broken in. You know, this one was brand new, but also make sure you grease it up a little bit. It might help if you have the issue, but I think it's pretty much something behind us now. Really love this smooth, lighter trigger pull. Really appreciate you guys suggesting this one to us. Glad we pulled it off. It's not that bad, but like I said in the video, if you decide you don't want to do it yourself or you get halfway through the project, you can send it on into us. Custom work, just give us a call, we'll schedule it, we'll set it up. Nice thing about us being a type seven FFL is that you can mail it directly to us because we are a manufacturer and we can mail it directly back to you. So there's no FFL transfer fees there. Really nice savings because those are usually 25 to 30 bucks each way. So it's nice to be able to do that. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know what you guys are interested in seeing possibly for the 509 next. Thank you, Car Brother, for all your ideas and your support. Really appreciate it. And as always, happy shooting. <laughs>